All right, what's up everyone? I'm starting another series specifically for athletes. So if I have any expertise either coaching or partaking in this sport, I will make videos on how you can apply that knowledge to the conjugate method and then apply it to your sport. So I'm going to start off with football. But I also coached youth football for seven years from all the way down from ages nine all the way down to up to ages 16 and 17. So I do know the sport, I understand what qualities, what physical attributes are necessary, the different positions, all that stuff. So let's start off with the top five max effort or heavy effort exercises that football players can put into their routines if they are following a conjugate style training plan. Now, the thing about football compared to other sports is there's very different positions. For example, an offensive lineman, the guys that block, are going to have a totally different skill set than wide receivers, which are the taller guys that typically catch the ball, for those of you that don't know. Different energy systems must be trained, but the muscles and movement patterns are pretty much similar. So I'm going to do broad training that any football player can benefit from, and then it's your job to tweak it for your position. I'm going to say a typical barbell back squat. This should be in almost everyone's routine. It should be cycled in, cycled out, but it should be appearing in your routine. It's the squat exercise that you're probably going to be able to move the most amount of weight while going through the longest range of motion. Now, the squat is not going to be the be all and end all for your lower body training when it comes to football, but it should be an integral part of your training program and you should have a good strength base before doing anything fancy. Number two, I'm going to say some sort of deadlift variation. Now everyone always goes, oh my god, athletes shouldn't deadlift, but I'm going to say a variation. You could go with a sumo deadlift with the bar, you can go with a trap bar deadlift, you can go with a snatch grip deadlift, and what I suggest, because you're going to have athletes of different heights, not everyone needs to deadlift straight off the floor. If you have a taller athlete, feel free to let that athlete pull off of elevated blocks. The only reason power lifters deadlift from the floor is because that's where the bar starts in competition. If you are not power lifting, you could set the bar height to whatever you want. Cater the lift to the athlete, not the other way around. Now these exercises are good for down weeks. Any type of good morning. I suggest you do them with a specialty bar. If you don't have access to that, I would say do it with a straight bar, but do them off of pins so you have a consistent range of motion. I like the safety squat bar. If you have a giant cambered bar or any other specialty bar that can make good mornings more effective for certain musculature, go ahead and use it. Now, when doing good mornings, I suggest you're not maxing out or just do heavy sets that fall within that three to five rep range. Then we're gonna do front squats. Now front squats are good because they build mobility in the hips, in the knees, in the ankles. This is very, very good. You can even do them off pins and this will simulate like a player coming off a three point stance, just coming up to explode for a block or a tackle, etc. I really like front squats off pins for football players, but not too high. You want to at least make sure it's just above where you would be when you explode. So some sort of front squat variation will be very, very beneficial for any position on the field. If your athlete does not have the mobility, have them work on it. But in the meantime, you can maybe do zercher squats where the bar is in the crooks of the elbow. If you have a front squat harness, you can, or there's many other ways. They can hold straps, they can do the cross arm grip, whatever is comfortable. Once again, cater the lift to the athlete, not the other way around. And then this lift is money when it comes to your heavy exercises for football, the box squat. I haven't seen a single football weight room that does not have athletes box squatting in this day and age. Set it at a good height, maybe one inch above or below parallel, somewhere in that range. Have them go with a wide stance. You can do narrow as well, but a wide stance will really build up their hips, which is a very important part of the human body in football players to have very, very strong hips. Now, I'm going to go all west side on this. I just like doing box squats with bands or chains because it kind of deloads the bottom and makes it like a more explosive lift. But if you don't have those, box squats without that stuff is just as good. These are top five exercises 
in general that will make football players strong. So if you're a strength and conditioning coach, a football player, or a football coach, make sure to show your athletes this video.